So hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Julia and I make videos about commentary and pop culture. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about the sad story in life of Honey Boo Boo, AKA Alana Thompson. Uh, I don't like using the names, but I feel like Honey Boo Boo is the way people recognize her the most. I mean, Honey Boo Boo was a household name back in like 2012, 2013. And so we're really just going to be discussing her life and kind of going through like the past nearly decade that she's been on our screens. And if anything, I feel like her mother, Mama June, is the one that has been really, really the focus. And Alana's just kind of been like collateral damage of all of her mother's insane mess and just dysfunction. So we're going to get into it. But before we get into today's video, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, HelloFresh. So if you're anything like me, you probably don't like going to the grocery store and having to consistently think about what to buy and spending the time and energy getting groceries, especially if your life is busy and hectic like mine. This is where HelloFresh has been my absolute saving grace. With HelloFresh, you're able to make super nutritious and ready to make meals delivered right to your doorstep. HelloFresh has not just allowed me to save time going to the grocery store, but it's honestly really allowed me to stay in my budget. Getting takeout is definitely something I want to limit more of this year, and with HelloFresh, I don't need to do unnecessary spending. HelloFresh is incredibly convenient and cheaper than grocery store shopping as it's 25% cheaper than getting takeout. I'm also becoming really health conscious this year, and I'm trying to limit more fatty and greasy foods. That's just not good for you now or in the long run. And HelloFresh really helps me stay on top of my fitness goals by delivering quality ingredients from the farm straight to my door. I also really love how these meals are just really physically appealing. I mean, it really makes me feel like I'm a highly rated Michelin star chef without any of the effort of being like a really top you know, chef. So I really appreciate that about HelloFresh as well. So if you want to accelerate your health goals and become more efficient in the kitchen, check out HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com and use promo code BWATTING21 for 21 free meals and free shipping. Now, thank you so much for HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and let's get back to Honey Boo Boo. So I'm going to be going through kind of like each of the people that was featured in Here Comes Honey Boo Boo and kind of just the beginning and the rise of Alana's fame and her family's fame. So Alana Thompson was born August 28, 2005 in McIntyre, Georgia to June Shannon and Mike Thompson. And in 2010, she was featured on the show Toddlers and Tierras at the age of five. So she literally became the face of the show with her iconic catchphrases like honey boo boo child and a dollar makes me holla honey boo boo. I can't even say it like her. I'm Alana, I'm six and I'm a beauty queen. So I must be crazy if they think they're gonna be me honey boo boo child. You ready for the hotel? We ain't got a swimming pool, unfortunately, this time. Come here. A dollar makes me holla, honey, boo boo. I don't know, but she really was extremely sassy, and people thought she was just, people thought it's like, could a kid really be this confident and this funny? Like, it was kind of insane, you know? Her mother also caught tons of attention for putting her daughter on go go juice, which is basically a concoction of Mountain Dew and Red Bull, and this was to keep Alana's energy and focus high during competitions. A lot of pageant moms and people know what the special juice is. Everybody has their different concoctions. You know, special juice is just to help her energize her. A lot of moms say, oh, you're doping up your child. Well, hey, no, I'm not. I'm not hurting her. She just drinks it for pageants to give her that extra oomph. So whatever works for your child, use it. Alana really liked this go-go juice because she would always say that this go-go juice will make her win. My special juice is going to help me win. Like she, she was really, I feel like just groomed to just need this juice. Like I feel like she just needed the juice. She felt like she couldn't do the competitions without it. But honestly, it really showed her mother's desperation to get Alana to win these pageants despite what it could be doing to her health. Cause a kid being on that much sugar and caffeine is not healthy when you're only five, six years old. Like your body can only handle so much and it's just gonna, it's not gonna go well. It's not gonna end well at all. So after the success of Alana's appearance on Toddlers and Tierras, her family then got a spinoff show called Here Comes Honey Boo Boo in 2012. And the show was seen as a hilariously fun and guilty pleasure, myself included. Like I, <laughs> I was in middle school, I think when it came out or like early high school. And it was definitely the show that everyone liked to just mock and make fun of. And it was disgusting because the family was disgusting. I mean, from burping to like farting and like just real indecent. Like they looked like just the stereotypical rednecks. When you think of a stereotypical redneck, that was this family. And so it was so fun because 
And it was crazy for me because I was like, yo, the fact that this actually exists, like people are actually like this, I couldn't believe it. So we saw the family participate in a lot of typical redneck activities, such as their love for go-kart racing, mud bogging. And then we also saw their family's signature sketty meals. So Alana referred to spaghetti as sketty. Yeah, we're trying to make other kinds of food, like, you know, sketty. I remember wanting the ketchup and butter. Me? I want butter, sketty, and ketchup. I think the family favorite meal is sketty. I will go get the butter, I'll swim in it. How you tell if sketty's done? When you throw it up on the wall and it sticks. And that was like a big part of the show, just the fact that these fam this family had like all these different quirks and different ways of referring to different things. And a lot of people were very attracted to this family's different way of handling American life. But again, with all that, this show had a lot of criticism because of how gross the family was, the burping, the spitting, the farting, the this and the that. Um, also just the exploitation of the children because the kids were pretty young. So you had like Alana who was six and then the rest of her siblings were under 18 apart from the oldest one. And so a lot of people felt that this was like child exploitation at its finest, which I really think it was because they were really exploiting the fact that this family was not the most kept. I feel like it just really opened up a whole um, means of being able to make fun of the kids. Now, again, I'm just gonna kind of go through each of the family members that were featured on this show. So we have June, who was like the matriarch of the family. So June was very family oriented. And she stated in an interview actually that it's really important to put your children and family first. And June was also really commended for the way she handled her children's money. She really wanted to set aside money for her kids. So June was very, very family oriented. She was very like, like family first, children first, you know, and that was really seen in the beginning of the show. And it's crazy how as we keep going, we're gonna see how that changed. Whatever you do with your kids, make your kids number one. No man, no woman, nothing. Your kids are number one. Um, June also had a lot of weird quirks, like her perpetual fear of mayonnaise. And for some reason, like during every interview, she would always have like a sneezing fit. She would sneeze a whole lot and it was just, egregious it was insane like the way she would sneeze the way, like her just different quirks like it was really focused on her because she was like the character aside from alana i'm gonna have to face her feel once in a while alana and then wanted me to face my fear of mayonnaise you gotta get rid of this fear you got to we're just gonna put it right here and put a spoonful in your mouth. No. And another thing people really commended June on was that she just had an unapologetic way about her family. Like she said, you know what, you like us, you hate us, it doesn't matter. Like she very much like was unapologetic about who she was and how she carried herself and her family. She really didn't mind what the public thought of her. And a lot of people commended her for that, even if they weren't going to, you know, raise their children the same way. We then get to Sugar Bear, Mike Sugar Bear Thompson, you know, who was Alana's father. And there isn't a lot to say about Sugar Bear. He was pretty quiet and stayed out the way. However, he was the reason why the show ended, which we'll get to later. Um, Mike actually tried to propose to June three times, but June refused because she was afraid of getting married. So that's kind of a very quick synopsis on Mike on this show. We then get to the rest of June's children. So we have Anna, AKA Chickadee, and Anna was the oldest of Mama June's children. So Anna's life actually started pretty roughly as June actually had Anna at a very young age, around 14, 15 years old. And June was not really fit to take care of her because June was young and June kind of put men over Anna. So June's mother ended up raising Anna. It also featured her engagement and her marriage on this show to her former husband, Michael Cardwell, and they are now divorced. Anna also has two children named Caitlin and Kylie, and Caitlin was actually born with an extra finger on her hand, an extra thumb. And so that was kind of a concept in the show of, you know, are we gonna keep this thumb? But Anna eventually had to remove because she didn't want Caitlyn to deal with bullies. And so a lot of Anna's like very, you know, milestones, like early milestones, cause she was a young teen when these happened, like 18, 19, like young person, you know, a lot of these milestones were featured on the show. And a lot of like big decisions that Anna had to make was featured on the show. When I saw her thumb, that was just weird. <laughs> that was really freaking weird. Kaylin is highly evolved. I wish I had an extra finger, then I can grab my cheese ball. Give me a high six, Kaylin. Anna was also abused by her mom's former boyfriend, Mark, and we're gonna get more into that later in the video. So next we're gonna get into the second born in this family, Jessica Shannon. So Jessica is the second born of the family and she was kind of seen as like 
really chill, kind of stay out the way, very responsible. Jessica was very school oriented. And so she was very, very serious about school. Even when her family got into an accident, she was the first one of her siblings to go back to school. She always kind of had that goal in mind that she wanted to go to college, that she wanted to achieve. And she ended up actually getting her college degree. Although I couldn't find what her degree was in, which really annoyed me. I was like, what? Like I looked at an article, one article said she was interested in going into nursing. Another article said that she graduated with an early childhood education degree. I don't know what it was. But as I go later into this video, you'll see that Jessica doesn't really use her degree. So I don't really know what the whole point <laughs> of it was, but yeah, she was very college and just education oriented. So next we're going to go into Lauren or Pumpkin Shannon. Pumpkin is another sister of Lana and one of June's daughters. And Pumpkin has a very, very prominent role as we get later into uh, this video talking about this family. But Pumpkin on this show was kind of seen as the wacky one. A lot of people thought Pumpkin was wacky, crazy. June even said that, you know, because Pumpkin got struck by lightning when she was six, June is like, I think that affected her noggin, you know? And so she was really seen as like the crazy, wacky, wild one. Six or seven years ago, Pung got struck by lightning while she was playing a game system. The lightning hit the house. The game system was plugged up. The lightning conducted and zapped. She was electrocuted. Pumpkin has never been the same since she's got a brain fry. But what's so funny about that is that Pumpkin has ended up actually being the most responsible of the family now because she has custody of Alana, which again, we will get into as we discuss um, the other shows such as Mama June Not, Not to Hot and Mama June Road to Redemption. So Pumpkin has a very, very prominent role. And I think it's kind of interesting how everyone in the family kind of saw Pumpkin as a little crazy, but she's actually been, I would say, the most level-headed of the family. You know, obviously she hasn't made perfect decisions and she hasn't done everything perfectly right but you can tell that pumpkin really does care so much for alana and pumpkin really took on such a huge role at such a young age pumpkin's only 23 so the fact that she's the legal guardian for her 16 17 year old sister is extremely commendable. So now we're gonna get into the show's cancellation. So in 2014, Here Comes Honey Boo Boo was shockingly canceled. This was due to reports of June dating a man that was convicted of child molestation and also because of Sugar Bear. Sugar Bear was involved in, in scandal and cheating on June. So June and Sugar Bear ended up splitting up. So there was a lot of controversy with that. Sugar Bear tried to deny so many times that he didn't do anything wrong by June and that he was being faithful, but he ended up making a dating profile on a website and basically he listed uh you know his interests and things like that and people were able to link it back to him and so june was just like this can't this isn't gonna work she's told some people supposedly anyway that you've been messing around on the dating websites and stuff not me not you you definitely didn't do that yep. It was just a whole lot of controversy surrounding the family and surrounding the men in the family. So this man that June was linked to was named Mark McDaniel, who was convicted of sexually abused a child and also abused Anna. So Anna and Mama June really had their own rift for a long time. And a lot of it stemmed from this, you know, the fact that June is seeing a man that messed with her own child and a lot of people were just like, how could you do this? You claim to be family first, you know, you're kind of gross, disgusting, whatever, but you claim to love your family. And here you are dating a man that took advantage of your young daughter when she was only eight years old in 2004. So a lot of people are just like, what the heck? And TLC basically pulled the plug on the show after that. And, you know, everything was kind of just shut down after that. So I want to make clear that the ending of the show wasn't actually because of Sugar Bear's infidelities. It was solely because of June dating a man that was a convicted S offender. Um, so Sugar Bear and June actually went on a show called Marriage Bootcamp Reality Stars in 2015, where he revealed his infidelities and the fact that he was messing with men and women. And June was like, I'm sure it was more. Um, June and Sugar Bear did separate in 2014, but I feel that when he revealed his infidelities on the show, that was the nail in the coffin. But as for the real cancellation of Here Comes Honey Boo Boo, it was because of who June was dating. So just wanted to clear that out. She tried to say that the photo with Mark was photoshopped and she was blasted on Dr. Phil by her family for lying. Her mother called her out for lying. Which I know you have seen. Uh, and, we, and, we, and we have a thing showing that that picture right there has been photoshopped by a company. You're saying this picture right here is not real? No. You, you so introduced she, so she her to so she a, pretty, a so registered... She pretty, she pretty much... But you took her to meet a registered... Fender. You put her in 
his world. And, you know, Anna at the time was very, very angry and had this strong rift with the family. Pumpkin actually was on her mother's side at this time, which changed over the years extremely. So, um, you know, basically on this show, June was trying to fight for her innocence, showing that, you know what, I'm not this bad mom. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. But it was very much shown that she was lying. TLC actually had a full season's worth of the show. They actually had a whole season's worth of Here Comes Honey Boo Boo that they ended up not airing, but later they ended up airing a couple episodes called Honey Boo Boo, The Lost Episodes. So that was aired in 2017, but because of all the controversy, they ended up not airing the rest of the fifth season. So then we moved to Mama June from Not To Hot. And this, at this time, I remember paying attention to this show a lot because Mama June was doing a ton of press tours, a ton, a, toll, a whole press tour, you know, that she lost weight. So she went on this show and she received weight loss surgery. And she also was shown trying to have a straight and narrow diet and also being very healthy. And so we saw this huge transformation of Mama June. She lost tons of weight, you know, skin completely like lost. She got veneers, she got a makeover, she um, upped her wardrobe. And so she looked and even sounded a bit like a completely different person. And I actually remember her going on the Wendy Williams show. And I remember being so surprised. That was like the first time I saw it. And I was like, what the heck? Like this woman looks so different. Like it was really crazy. So that created a lot of buzz and kind of really brought the Shannon Thompson, what yada yada family, <laughs> back into the limelight. So this show primarily features Alana, Pumpkin, Sugar Bear, and Sugar Bear's former wife, Jennifer. And Jennifer was definitely kind of, she was shysty. She was really annoying on this show. She was kind of portrayed as the villain. You know, she really tried to show that she was caring and that she really cared for, you know, the family. But, you know, it kind of seems like a lot of things she was doing were to get on June's nerves. But we also see how she was really concerned with weight loss because she wanted to get weight loss, but she was worried that Mike would not be into that because she was like oh mike likes bigger women so she didn't want to actually lose weight but you know it was kind of like a really uh dramatic show in that sense um we also pumpkin in this show pumpkin was kind of like a supporting character pumpkin was supporting her mother and kind of being uh you know just typical sibling stuff with alana and so we really kind of saw uh more of their family dynamic and how things change with june losing weight and having this new look however things were not blissful for long as we then get into mama june family crisis so this was basically the same show as not to hop but it was rebranded as family crisis because June and her boyfriend Gino ended up having cocaine addiction and a lot of the show was chronicling um, June's addiction and kind of what she was doing and how she was destroying her family in the process. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about Gino. So Gino was June's boyfriend and Gino was a man that was you know, really close to the family. Um, actually, Alana and Pumpkin really took to him quite nicely in the beginning. You can tell that Alana and Gino really bonded well. You can tell that he really cared for the kids and seemed to have their best interests at heart, but he was definitely a huge enabler in June's addiction and it was also addicted himself. So we saw how, again, it was just crashing down. You saw every single episode, the family was stressed, June taking money from people, June being sneaky, June lying, June rejecting rehab and all these things. So it really took a toll on the family and I started to feel really bad for Alana particularly all, for all of them but you know especially Alana given the fact that this was really happening during very formative years for her this is like the you know like the dead heat of her teen years and having to see her mom go through all this stuff was insane and again what's really sad about Mama June you know family crisis her addiction is the fact that you know she would go into rehab and then she would come out within a day she sometimes wouldn't even go she ended up pawning the title of Jennifer's car why are you look a little hot and bothered mama pawned the title of my car so I got repossessed what? are you serious uh which Pumpkin really, really, really was pissed about and still kind of holds against her. It's like, you pawned the title of my sister's car, you sold this, you sold that. The only thing that June ended up not selling was Alana's trophies. And this moment was so sad because you saw Alana literally smiling and so happy. She was like, she didn't sell the trophies. And I'm just like, that's so sad that you're happy that your mom didn't get rid of your trophies. It just goes to show how toxic the environment was and how much June was. She was in so deep. She was in so incredibly deep. 
Eventually, June did end up going to rehab. And this kind of segues into the next part of, you know, their saga, which is Mama June Road to Redemption, which is still airing today. Um, you know, Mama June, actually, I've seen on her Instagram, she's a lot of people have asked her, like, when is this show coming back? Da, 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 da. And she says, you know, stay tuned. The show will be back. So, you know, this is still airing right now. Um, really, the biggest thing I really want to talk about with this show is that, again, it really is June trying to get redemption from her family. She's trying to earn back her family's trust. She's trying to get back into Alana's life. And Pumpkin ended up having to take custody of Alana, temporary custody, because of June's craziness and all of the, you know, sadness with her addiction. All of the you know, horrible things she was going through, all the craziness and just instability in all of their lives, Pumpkin took it upon herself to adopt Alana, essentially, or to have temporary custody of Alana. And now Pumpkin has full custody of Alana. So in this show, you see a lot of, you know, back and forth between June and Pumpkin. Um, Pumpkin is just pissed. Pumpkin can't stand her mom. Pumpkin is tired of all the lies. Pumpkin is tired of everything that June does. You know, June is now dating a young man. He's around 24 years old. And there's actually a scene from this uh, show where um, uh, June and Alana are coming back from a trip. So, Ju so Alana is thinking that June is going to come home with her, but turns out June is going to meet up with her boyfriend and she basically puts Alana in a car and sends her home to Pumpkin. And Alana's just like, what the heck? Like, you're just leaving me like this. You're just going to make me go home by myself. And production, even production, this is what really got me. Production was literally like, you're just going to do this. You're just going to send your kid away. You're not even going to like take, you know, actually good care of your own child. Like you're just going to send her away, you know? And production literally went to Alana. Um, one of the producers went to Alana and said, hey, text me when you get home. So the fact that a producer has more care for Alana than her own mother says a lot. I'll be back in a couple days. Hopefully both of our cars are out here. So you're just gonna just leave me in a car with some random person I don't even know? For me. Leave it? Her? Yes. What do you mean? When you're going home. Alana's almost 16, and I mean, at 16, I was pregnant with my second child and on my own, working two jobs. So I think Alana's gonna be just fine in a car going home an hour and a half. Okay, I will. There also is, you know, some scenes in the show where basically we just see June seeming to be really greedy and trying to live through Alana again. There is an episode that kind of focuses on June and Alana being asked to be on The Masked Singer. And you can tell Alana is just like not feeling it. She doesn't want to go with her mom. She's excited, but you know, her mom's kind of like, mm. and you know, June is saying, you know, we're going to go, we're going to go. And Pumpkin says, I'm her legal guardian. I have the final say of whether Alana gets to go or not. And June's just like, who cares? Alana's going. A lot of my kid. And then there's another part of the show, there's another episode where, so Pumpkin and June are speaking with someone about Alana's, you know, about custody. And basically June is saying, oh, I thought that we were gonna give you full like custody, like the rights. So essentially to adopt a child, that parent has to give up their rights to that child. And so Pumpkin was, you know, they were talking about, you know, an arrangement and Pumpkin obviously was getting really, really angry with her mom. And her mom's like, oh, I thought that's what this was. I thought we were gonna give, uh, you know, my rights away. When you do a custody case, obviously child support is an issue in a custody case. Yeah, but if you're signing away your rights, you have no... You're not signing away your rights. Exactly. You're signing away, you're signing custody I ain't trying to do to you her. real dirty. I can, if you would like me to. I'm gonna tell you, this is some Pumpkin asking for child support. Well, that's what I thought we were signing is that rights were being. No, I'm getting sole custody of Alana. If, if you signed over your rights, that would mean that the Pumpkin would be adopting her. Right, that's what I thought this was. Oh, okay, well now. now oh, bitch, now you're playing stupid. No, I did. And Pumpkin's just like, you really would just want to sign away your rights to your daughter? Like you just want to sign away your rights. It was really insane because it just seemed as though June did not even understand the whole process at hand. And it just showed that she just didn't really seem to have regard for Alana because she was so quick to just send her away. So I also just want to give a quick update on Anna. So Anna and June have had a lot of beef over the past several years. Uh, just tons of beef. You know, Anna alleged that June owed her thousands of dollars from her appearances on Here Comes Honey Boo Boo and other the other shows. And basically June was saying that, oh, Alana just needs to, I mean, Anna just needs to grow up. Anna just needs to mature. She said you owed her money. She had an issue with the guy you dated. We, um, we talk every once in a while. Anna has some struggles that she needs to deal with herself. 
and needs to stop being, I'm not trying to mean stop being so selfish. So yes, June was saying that, you know what, like every, she thinks everything is about her, everything revolves around her. And so they really had a lot of beef and also considering her past relationship. And so I think Anna at this point has basically distanced herself from her family. She's in contact with her sisters. And at least from TikTok, it seems like they have a good relationship now. But Anna was really just not feeling the family at this point. She was not feeling uh, June's antics and everything like that. And she's basically separated herself. She's divorced from her husband that she married on the show. However, she is with her children now. She's raising her kids. She also is working at a car dealership, which seems, you know, pretty cool, pretty low key for her. Uh, she also was seen working at Walmart. Uh, and I think this is because she ended up blowing a lot of her money. Uh, she ended up doing a whole makeover, you know, hair, nails, like whole, the whole nine yards. And uh, a lot of people were, you know, thinking like you blew all your money on that. And now you're working at Walmart, but she seems pretty happy, you know, from her Instagram working at this dealership. So I think she's really happy and she enjoys her life and everything. So, you know, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty good that she seems to be living a more low key life and not so much, you know, having to deal with her mother. I also wanted to talk a little bit about Alana today. So Alana today is now 17 years old and she's dating someone who is four years older than her. So he's 21. They started dating when she was 16 and he was 20. And this is just gross to me because what could you possibly have in common with like uh, some people will be like, oh, it's not that big of an age difference. I'm like, sorry, when I was 20, 16 year olds were the bane of my existence. When I was 20, I was trying to escape my teen years. I was trying to escape high school those years. So I would never look at a 16 year old as attractive as a 20 year old. They've been legally drink yet and he is still with her. And so a lot of people, you know, while people commend pumpkin, they also kind of look at pumpkin a little weird. It's like, how are you allowing this? But honestly, I think it's just the cycle of also, as you just saw, I put up a little graphic of fact that her boyfriend, Draylin, has been arrested for statutory R. So I'm just like, <laughs> why is this being allowed? Like, this isn't even, it, it's self-explanatory. What else do I have to say? What else do I really need to say? This family, I think it's just a cycle of men being the focal points, men being the most important in the family. And, you know, Pumpkin herself was a teen mom at 17. And while she's still with her guy today, Josh, she's still with him. Everything seems swimmingly and, you know, good. I think, again, it just goes to show that this is something generational. And I think this show really just is a big example of generational trauma and when you don't heal from the past and when you don't learn from the past because i didn't mention this in the beginning but june's mother was also a, wo a woman who was very obsessed with men and put men before her so it just trickled down and so now we have alana who's uh 16 dating someone who's that old it just she, she's just a product of her environment i think all we can hope for is that alana becomes Eon's better than her mother and the rest of her family. You know, um, I think there's still a lot of hope for her, but I still think it's really sad given everything that, you know, she's gone through and how her mother has disregarded her and how she's had to be under the care of her 23 year old sister who's still young herself. And I, I feel really bad for Pumpkin because Pumpkin herself is not that old. Like Pumpkin is so young. She's younger than me. I'm 24. I'll be 25 this year. Pumpkin just turned 23. I'm just like, I can't imagine that responsibility of having children. She also just had twins. So she has three kids, a partner, and is caring for her underage sister. I mean, it's just a lot. I just really hope and pray that Pumpkin looks back at her young years and is very grateful and proud of herself for what she did. But I wouldn't be shocked if she looks back and is sad that she lost her youth. Um, how can you not be? Um, so again, I think this show is a huge cautionary tale. I feel like it really is just generational trauma on a screen. And I really think that what people can take away from this is just understanding that you really need to try to get yourself in the best shape possible before you bring children into this world. And if you make mistakes, because you will, we all will make mistakes, you know, no one can be the perfect parent. You should do your heart, your damnedest and your hardest to rectify the situation. And so I think that's what's really sad about this family is it just seems like June is trying to look like a good mother, but not actually caring for her children like she really should. And she even said about Alana, she was like, Alana 16, like I was by myself at 16. It didn't matter. It's like, you should want better for your kids because 16 when you were 16 is, six, is different than 16 now. Like the world is completely different. And 
it's never okay. So again, you know, I just, this family makes me sad, but there are some lights in the family like pumpkin. So I'm just hoping that things continue to, you know, progress for them. And I pray that they really seek therapy, that they're getting the proper help they need. Although Alana did say she doesn't really like therapy, that it doesn't really work for her. So I don't know if she'll reconsider as she gets older, or maybe she just needs the right therapist. But um, I'm just really hoping that things get better for this family. But, you know, I think they've been through a lot over the past um, decade and it'll be interesting to see where they continue from here. So I thank you all so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed talking about this family despite the sadness in it. But at the end of the day, they were very entertaining and it's very hard to look away from everything going on in this family. So I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, so thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.